Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do some trick photography post-production. And in the description below this video will be a link to the files. You could download these images for free and try this yourself. Now, as you look at the image, you're seeing a park bench with three versions of my son Joe sitting on the bench. This actually consists of three different images. I put my camera on a tripod and first I took an image of my son Joe sitting in the middle of the bench. Then I took another image of him sitting on the extreme left of the bench and finally I took an image of him sitting on the extreme right of the bench. And in Photoshop we can combine these images using masks and have it look like there's three versions of Joe sitting on the bench. And I think you'll be surprised at how easy this is to do. Now, I'm going to reset my Photoshop and I'll show you how to do this from the beginning. Okay, I just opened Photoshop and I need to get those three images into Photoshop. And to do that, we're going to go up to the File menu and then we're going to go down to Scripts and then we're going to go down to Load Files into Stack. And when you do that, you'll get the Load Layers dialog box. From here, we're going to click on Browse. We're going to browse to where those images are on our computer. And I have them right here. Click on one, hold the shift key down, and click on the last one. So you have all three of them selected, and click open. Now in this load layers dialog box, the only thing you need to do is make sure that you click on attempt to automatically align source images. Even though I had my camera on a tripod, it was a bit windy and it may have moved slightly between shots. So this will make sure that everything is lined up perfectly and we don't get a ghost look to the shot, like the bench is ghosted or anything like that. So we're going to make sure that's checked and click OK. And you'll notice then it will load all three images into Photoshop, one on top of the other. You can see them over here in the layer stack. Now I'm going to fit this to my screen by hitting Command-0 on my Mac. It's Control-0 on a PC, so it just looks bigger. So we have the three images, and it really doesn't matter what order they're in. Uh, the bottom image is him sitting on the far right. The image above that is him sitting on the far left and the image above that is him sitting in the middle and again it doesn't matter if you loaded yours in and they're loaded differently it doesn't matter i'll show you how to fix it or how to do it you can drag them so if you want to match my order just grab a layer and drag it to its position so i'll drag that one to the middle i'll put it back where it was all right so just drag them around as you want but i'll leave them as is what you want to do is turn off the top layer and click on the middle layer. So that one is the active layer. That has Joe sitting on the far left. And you can see it completely covers up the layer below it, which is Joe sitting on the far right. So what we need to do is with this middle layer turned back on, we need to poke a hole on the right-hand side of it so that that bottom layer, Joe sitting on the far right, comes through. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask to this middle layer. Go down here and click on the mask icon and you can see we applied a white mask. A white mask does nothing. So nothing has changed. But we need to poke a hole through this mask so that the layer below it, Joe sitting on the right, comes through. And to do that, all we need to do is paint in black on the mask. So we need to get a brush. Hit the B key on your keyboard for a brush. Now up at the top are brush settings. Um, I have hardness somewhere in the middle, like around 50%, that's good. Opacity 100%, flow 100%, smoothing 10% is fine. And then you could affect the brush size with your bracket keys. The left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. Now we know Joe, the bottom layer Joe, is on the far right of the bench. So I need to paint over here in black. Make sure your color swatches are black and white. They should be if you're clicked on the mask. If you're not clicked on the mask, you can tell that in my case, I have red as the foreground color. So just make sure you're clicked on the mask and you'll have a black and white swatch. Make sure the black swatch is the foreground swatch. If it isn't, hit the X key just to swap foreground and background swatches. So we're painting in black on the mask. We're clicked on the mask. And I know Joe's over here on the right, so I'll just paint. and. Try to be careful that you don't go too far into the middle. So you're painting right where he is. Just like this. Now we have 
two Joes on the bench. Now we'll turn on that top layer and click on it so it's the active layer. Now that automatically is covering up both layers below it. Now we need to poke two holes in this one so that Joe on the left comes through and Joe on the right comes through. So click on that, make sure that's the active layer. Get a mask. So we add the mask. Again, make sure you're clicked on the mask. Make sure you're painting in black. And we're going to paint over here now to get the Joe on the right to come through. Now you got to be careful. We don't want to go too far and touch Joe in the middle. And we'll come over here as well. Now if you do make a mistake, like you accidentally whoop, go like that, all you need to do is paint in white on the mask to undo that mistake. So hit the X key on your keyboard to swap the swatches so white is now the foreground color. And then you could undo your mistake. As easy as that. Now we did it. We have three versions of Joe sitting at the same time on the bench. Now you could save this. Go up to File, down to Save or Save As. And when you do that, it's going to by default ask you if you want to save it to the cloud. I don't. I want to save it to my computer. And it's going to, don't show this again, so I'll never see that again. So I'm going to save on my computer. And give it a name. You could save it as a PSD file. But if you want to share it with the world, you're probably going to want to save it to a different file type. So you're not going to want to do the PSD file um, or a TIFF file or anything like that. So what you want to do instead is you want to export this. So we'll cancel that. We'll go up to File. We'll go down to Export and then Export As. And here you're most likely going to want to do a JPEG. And quality, the higher the quality, the larger the file. With JPEG quality of 6, you could see that it's a 1.9 megabit file or megabyte file. Um, the width and size you could change if you want to change it and then just click export when you're happy with the settings and then it will ask you where to save it and to give it a name I'll just call this Joe and just save it to my desktop I guess right there and that's it that's how you do this very easy I think those of you that aren't as familiar in Photoshop may be a bit surprised about how easy this is to do now again, in the description below this video will be a link uh, where you could download the files for free and try this yourself. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.